There's lots of different ways that you can collect LiDAR data. And traditionally, we've talked about doing it with a drone. But sometimes that's not always convenient. So I'd like to talk about a couple different ways that we can use other than using drones uh, to collect your LiDAR data. If you don't know me yet, my name is Dan Hubert, and I am uh, marketing here at uh, Phoenix LiDAR Systems. And what I want to talk today about is using SLAM. Now, there's times that using a drone makes sense. In the construction industry or utilities out in the open, it allows us to collect LiDAR data fast and affordably. But there's times, like in urban environments or where there's restricted airspace, that that's not always possible. And sometimes, it's not even the drone, it is the GPS technology. In an urban environment, you have a chance of having dropped GPS, lost signal. And also, for what we're going to show today, is that making that transition from the outside to the inside in a fast, systematic manner. So the example I wanted to show you today was from one of our agents in Poland who went out and collected at a museum. Now, why this was good to use for a slam base is there was lots of uh, what we call pattern of life. So people moving around, uh, is it a close environment? And we want to actually do something close to historical preservation, which means we're actually more in the documentation phase versus actually mapping and measuring. So what we used today was a Scout 16, which is a Velodyne system. It's a made in the USA product. And what this allowed us to do is to measure or document the area in a safe and systematic way. So how did we collect the data? So the first thing you have to understand with our systems is we use a GPS base station. That allows us to give reference to the Earth's surface and makes registration a lot easier. From there, we'd have a handheld grip and use our Scout 16 system, and we'd hold in a position so that we could lock in our initial reference point. From there, we'd do a couple quick calibrations where we run in or walk in a circle. And then after that, we could just walk at our leisure uh, as we go and collect, making sure that every now and then we come back to our original points so we have what we call a closed loop, and it just makes our slam better. Okay, the last piece of this, to just to be mindful of, is that it's not so much how much we collect, but the quality we collect when we're trying to match an inside and an outside. And so having hard packed surfaces provides that resolution so that we have a common reference system when we use something like LiDAR Snap and reference one LiDAR point cloud to another. All right, so now how do we process this? Well, very much like drone LiDAR systems, you know, the first thing we want to do is do a base station registration. Very easy to, to put in those grid points for us. Then we go ahead and do our SLAM telemetry and LiDAR processing, uh, which takes all those different reference points that the LiDAR sees and turns that into a cohesive data product. After that, then we're into like SE Pro or LiDAR Mill, where we're going to do a little bit of data conditioning, whether we're removing noise, outliers, strip matching, or some data conditioning, just to ensure that that product is fully succinct and is, uh, has high precision. After that, we have a decision to make. So we want to fuse those two points together. So we could use uh, SE Pro and LiDAR Snap, where we can take one reference uh, LiDAR set, preferably outside, and sync that to our inside non-GPS reference point system. Now, if you're using two set different sets, like you're using a Scout system from the outside, and you're using a Trestle LiDAR system in the inside, you may want to use TerraSolid instead. And that way, you can use its referencing system and Snap to Grid. Okay, hey, now let's go take a look at the data, because this really is the whole proof of what this is about. So if we kind of jump in here onto our data set, I'm going to scroll out really quickly. You can see, you know, we have moderate vegetation, but we have got good hard surfaces. And, you know, what we used to call uh, in my former life, you know, that we have a lot of pattern of life. So that means a lot of people, cars, and things that really are going to make drone operation not maybe unsafe, but maybe more complicated um, and when we'd have to go do that. So this is why using a handheld system is, or a backpack is preferred. Um, and so as we scroll in, we can see we get the outsides of the building and all the facades and attributes. And in this particular case, being a museum, this is more into what we call documentation, uh, archeology span or uh, traditional um, heritage preservation. So these are the kind of applications that we'd be doing in this particular uh, case. And so we're able now to get the outside of the building, which is pretty typical of most LiDAR systems. And the one nice advantage to all of this is it's just a US-made system. So it has a lot of value, not only in 
where this, uh, the data that we're getting, but also where it comes from if you have to worry about compliance. So I'm gonna walk you through the front door here, and you can see we have pretty good strip matching. A little cloudy, but we'll move through this. And there we go. And so as you start to look, we have really good resolution for using a Velodyne product. And we can get our windows and attributes and then move into the different features that we would wanna see here. And so the, typically this kind of application is really good, especially if we can take an outside reference point and tie it in. So everything in here is accurate within about five to six centimeters, absolute around uh, on the earth. So that's a real advantage. It saves a lot of time. Traditional methods of we had to do this would usually use a outside aerial or terrestrial uh, system. And then we'd have to use a series of terrestrial systems to co-register. So using SLAM and mobile is, is really a way to kind of speed up the workflow if you don't need a high level of detail here. And this still is pretty good. Now, if you'd like to see this data set, I'll leave a link down below that you can take a look at this at your leisure. And then of course, if you want to learn more about SLAM, why don't you leave a like and a comment in there and tell us what you wanna learn because we're gonna have a lot more of these educational pieces around SLAM and other LiDAR technologies as well. Also, if you would like to learn more and wanna to talk to one of our experts, I'll leave a link down below that you can reach out and we can help you with you know, understanding this technology and seeing if it's right for you. Thank you all, I'll see you in the next video.